So doing the full setup for Atari DeepMind is, uh, you know, it should be possible. They released their code, but, you know, it's not really realistic to do that on the Mac. But I thought I'd uh, give you some insight into how it works by actually looking at some examples where it doesn't work that well. So just, you know, to be clear, what the DeepMind guys did with Atari is amazing. You know, um, this is just sort of like one, you know, one slide view of what they're doing. Like their system is actually taking that screen for a game scanning just the images, turning into a uh, three-layer or maybe more, you know, um, deep neural network, and then, you know, fully connecting the last layer to to actual outputs. I mean, to play a game like this and understand sort of all the rules and learn the strategies is amazing, even if it worked for one game. You know, and then the fact that it works for, you know, for many games, uh, this is all from the Nature paper, is, is amazing. Like games like, you know, Pinball and Breakout and things like that, it's you know, performing better than any other engine and better than the best humans, which is kind of cool. You know, but also you can kind of, you know, maybe get a little bit of an idea why. So let's take a look at Breakout again. And just like last time, I put in sort of an agent that acts uh, randomly or almost randomly. You know, but you can sort of see what's happening here is is um, when, the, when, the, when the, the agent makes a nice strike and hits the ball and clears tiles and clears a lot of tiles. It's getting instant feedback. So let's see when it finally hits one. Um, yeah, there you go. You see right there, it increased the value. Um, it's getting the reward right away. And you can sort of imagine, and I think you've all seen the video where it sort of trains in over hundreds of episodes. It gets really, really good. It hits the ball perfectly. It aims for the corner, that sort of thing. Kind of makes sense. Um, but let me show you another game where this doesn't work quite as well. So going back to the graph, when I was presenting this paper to my class, I noticed um, that Montezuma's Revenge was just a zero. So uh, another one that's interesting is Pac-Man's pretty low. But let's look at Montezuma and why, why this sort of uh, learning system doesn't really ever make any progress at all. So I downloaded the game, and let's play it. So, as you see, I'm walking with this guy. I'm controlling him with the up and down arrows, making him jump with the space. Um, and I'm supposed to get him over to the key. So, you know, I think pretty, pretty quickly you sort of figure out that the idea is to take the guy around the corner, jump over this guy. Oh, didn't work out that time. And, uh, you know, if you try to just jump this way, you can't quite make it. So, you know... Fairly sophisticated game, but not so much. Anyway, I got up. I got the key. Now, the problem with that game is there's no reward until I get the key. So let's take a look at, you know, an agent playing this game, what that might look like. And I had to tweak some parameters to make it sort of play reasonably well. So... You know, the good news is, you know, it experiences the environment, see it's going to fall down, you know, that's a zero. You know, he knows, sort of knows that it, he died. And you can, you can see that even a, a, a mostly random agent eventually figures out, um, you know, he's able to have a session where he gets all the way around and takes the pole and goes down. Oh, this guy's not doing great. Let's see, come on. Um, yeah, there he goes. Awesome. So you see that that happens, but... The problem is a human can tell that we made progress. We got closer to the key, you know, that we're getting you know, near here by going all the way around. But the rewards are still zero, you know. So, um, you know, I'd love to see what, you know, the, the agent for DeepMind looks like. But for all of their machine power and all of the work, you know, they never make any progress. They never actually get to the key because their algorithm is based on sort of doing nothing, adjusting the epsilon, and learning and doing levels of learning and seeing which actions lead to higher reward. Now, here, I can imagine making progress by designing some sort of intermediate reward. Like, you know, if you see the game, you can say, okay, well, maybe going further and not dying is a reward, and what can you do that way? Um, you know, not as big a reward as getting the key, but, you know, sort of something. But, with, but, but without that, you just can't get anywhere. So it would almost be like playing chess or go, and the only reward being whether you won the game at the end is a one or a zero. It's just, um, 
you know, maybe you could adjust some of the parameters and you can get that far, but I'm not even sure it's possible with just random actions to get all the way to the end and, and to learn sort of how we got there. Although maybe it is because here I just have random actions and uh, this guy hasn't gotten to the key yet, but he's come pretty close. So anyway, that's, uh, that's all I wanted to show you guys. Um, in fact, um, the intermediate rewards is something that's pretty interesting and something I was talking to, you know, members of my deep learning class with. I'm, I'm, I think the game to look at will be something like, um, you know, like, like backgammon or go, where obviously it's not just a matter of winning and losing the game. That's trained with a deep neural network. You know, some sort of intermediate rewards are, are also trained. So I'm pretty curious about that. You know, I'll figure it out. I'll let you guys know. Thanks.